40% of our business going down to zero. So I was angry. I cried. I mean, all of those emotions. trying to pitch Starbucks for oh, yeah, ever, yeah. Mm -hmm. ever. And they just kept being like, no. And we'd send them hint and they wouldn't respond. And we were just like, oh, it'd be so great if we ever got in into Starbucks. And then finally, one of the buyers called us and she said, so we'd love to meet with you, but we don't want to talk about hint. The one that is, you know, mm -hmm. for adults in, in the bottle. What we want to talk to you about is creating a box drink this is before we had hint kids that uh that really helps people have an alternative to apple juice and i'm like oh we can do that we hadn't done that we had some prototypes that we were playing around with in those boxes they're called tetra packs but we hadn't done it yet mm -hmm. so she said i just have to you know tell you before you come up please don't pitch me on the hint we're only talking about the kids. I don't want you to get too excited about, you know, this opportunity. We're just kind of thinking about it. And of course I'm saying, yes, I'm going to get in the door. So she, she really made it very clear that if you walk in the door and please don't have samples, yeah, I and I'm like, okay, but we're basically going to put him in <laughs> into the box don't like how are we going to do this and we're not going to be able to like prototype it unless i mean you can just imagine it in the box anyway so my husband who was the chief operating officer goes with me and we land in another seattle company uh we land in seattle and uh and he said so do you have let's stop by whole foods and get some samples and this was before hint was in airports uh so we were you know you can't take the water on the plane very easily right. so we go to a store and go buy some product and i said no she was very specific about it i don't want to be kicked out of starbucks you know the the buyers meeting and i mean she was like seriously serious about about this and uh he's like this is the most ridiculous thing i've ever heard in my life like what do you mean you can't bring your product in like this is nuts and so i said okay how can we do that? Okay. So I'm going to bring it in and I'm just going to be drinking it. And maybe I'll have an extra bottle because maybe somebody will mm -hmm. ask for it, but I'm not going to tell her that I have the samples. And he's like, whatever, this is, this is absolutely crazy. <laughs> so, so we go to the meeting and I'm like, you know, trying to follow the rules. I don't, I'm like so excited and, you know, inspired, enamored, you know, like by this idea that we've even got a meeting. So we walk into the meeting and uh she says um so do you have samples and i'm like this is a trick question and so i said to her uh this is a trick question you told me not to bring any samples with me and i said uh but i do have these prototypes and then one of the people who was in the room who was her boss said so you don't have any hint with you and i'm like okay do i trust this is she going to kick me out of the building for this? And I said, uh, well, I have my bottle that I'm drinking. And I said, but you know what? I have an extra bottle that I was going to have after, but you can have it. And she said, oh, my God, I'm so thirsty. Thank you so much. And so the woman who told me that, you know, don't bring the samples in, she's just sitting there staring at me. Mm -hmm. And luckily, she didn't tell my husband. So he has like six bottles of Hint that are ice cold. And he said, I have water with me right here. Do you want some? Do you have Hint? Do you want the Hint? And she said, I would love it. And so here I was basically taking everything that she said as, you know, don't mm -hmm. do this. Mm -hmm. And instead, you know, sometimes you just have to take the risk. I, it, I ultimately don't think um, it, we probably that meeting probably wouldn't have gone well if we didn't have water there. So don't take no, don't uh if somebody's telling you to do something that you just think is weird uh and probably not right for your business, um, trust your gut on it yeah. and and bring it in. Anyway, so 
we end up, uh, you know, having a meeting, they call us and we, uh, and basically they were going to do a tiny test with the hint kits. And we thought, okay, well, we've got to actually figure out how to create it and figure out the manufacturer, all the stuff. And then, uh, probably two days later, she, the woman called and she said, you know, we were all talking. I think we should, instead of the kids launch the hint, the regular hint that you guys do the blackberry flavor. And, uh, could you guys launch it in 30 days? And I thought, oh, wow, that's really going to be pushing it. But yes, I didn't know how we were going to do it, but we were going to do it. And so then she called back, we were just going to do a test. I think it was like hundred stores. It was, you know, not mm -hmm. a lot of stores for Starbucks. So she called back and said, so we were wondering, and I know this is really pushing it for you guys, but is there any way you guys could do 2000 stores at that time? They had about 6,000 stores. And I was like, 2000. I mean, this was going to be a big chunk mm -hmm. of our overall business. And I was so excited. I still didn't know how we were going to be able to achieve this, but we were going to make it happen. She calls back a week after that. And she said, what if we launched it in all 6,000 stores? I hadn't even figured out how to launch it in 2,000 stores, but I was like, yes. And I was <laughs> like, oh my God, what have I signed up for? We have to make this happen for sure. So we end up launching and 6,000 stores. And on the day that we launched, I said, you know, I'm really trying to figure this out. I appreciate this opportunity. Uh, but what is success to you guys? And she said, oh, that's so interesting. No one's asked mm -hmm. me that. It's such a good question. And, it's a very important question. Yeah. What is success? Because I mean, I'm kind of I'm on cloud nine feeling mm -hmm. I'm super successful because I'm in 6,000 Starbucks stores, but I don't want that business to go away tomorrow. And she said, if you do a bottle and a half per store per day, then you're successful. So it took us about six months to sort of get to that point and got the kinks out of, you mm -hmm. know, the distribution and people got to know the product. Cause again, we really were only known in kind of the Bay Area, a little bit in New mm -hmm. York, but we were really on the coast and definitely not in Seattle. And here we are in Chicago with them and South Dakota. Nobody had seen this product. They had no idea what it was. We weren't doing any marketing or anything. Mm -hmm. So we launch it uh, and about six months in, we're doing a bottle and a half per store per day. And again, being the person that is, you know, always wanting to do better and setting new goals. Once I'm reaching those goals, I'm like, we got to get to three bottles per store per day and we're just going to kill it. So a year and a half in, we're doing three bottles per store per day. I'm feeling excellent. Uh, it's, it's overall about 40% of our overall business at this point. Very important customer. We were spending mm -hmm. all of our time on you know, making sure that Starbucks was happy. We get an email from a new person introducing herself, and she is the new buyer for Starbucks. And she said, so nice to meet you. I just, you know, heard great things about you and Hint, and we love Hint, it's all great. But I have some bad news for you. And I'm like, looking at my numbers, you know, we're doing three, three bottles per store per day. And she said, we're changing strategy. Nobody told me that this was going to happen, right? Mm -hmm. And no, we're changing strategy and we want to put food into the cases. And we want to maintain exactly the beverages that are branded Starbucks or that are uh you know, we're distributing some other products, uh, or, or I should say other companies, Pepsi was distributing some Starbucks products. So they weren't going to kick out mm -hmm. the Pepsi companies, but I didn't have an argument for them. I, other than, oh, you must be thinking of somebody else. Cause we're doing three bottles per store per day. <laughs> yeah. That's, that's double what success was or the previous person. 
Uh, and she said, I know, I'm really sorry. And I said, so when were you thinking this was going to happen? And she said, next week. Go 40% of our business going down to zero. So I was angry. I cried. I mean, all of those emotions, because mm -hmm. here I was, I had all this product already made mm -hmm. for Starbucks. I had, this, And you hit the goal. I mean, it's very hard for, it's hard as a goal. human being to be like, I've exceeded the goal. I exceeded your expectations and you still don't, you're still not happy. That would be hard. Right. And you know, there's, they didn't have to buy it. It's not mm -hmm. like you have a contract that says, oh, Starbucks is going to continue buying it. They're going to buy it. In my mind, they're going to buy it as long as you're successful. What no one tells you is when a new person comes in yeah. to an organization, they're not necessarily going to tell you the suppliers, by the way, we're going to have a new person come in and they're tasked with building an entirely new strategy and revenue stream. They'll tell you after they've done it. And then they'll tell you that you're not part of it. Right. And mm -hmm. that's a really important lesson because if you're banking on it, on this business going on forever, and this really applies to so many situations. This oh, could apply yeah. to, uh, you know, suppliers of yours, right? Not just like you being on the other side of things. Like you were thinking everything's great. Well, all of a sudden somebody comes in and is willing to pay more money for something that you're dependent on, mm -hmm. right? For your business. Like, let's say that you have a food company and you're dependent on this ingredient. And all of a sudden somebody comes in and says, we're going to buy it all. Then do you have a backup plan? So, th so the lessons learned from that, especially if somebody is that critical to your overall business, you have to have options. This applies to when mm -hmm. to employees. I mean, something I learned along the way as well, uh, actually from, being an employee, not being a, uh, not being a boss at that time. But I remember seeing my bosses at CNN were constantly interviewing and also at AOL constantly. And I kept thinking, oh, they're going to fire me, right? Something's going to happen where I'm going to be without a job. And I remember saying to my boss at AOL, you know, it makes people feel really uncomfortable when you're, you know, interviewing people four roles and he's, and I'll never forget that his name was Meyer. I never forget Meyer saying, well, so how do I know that you're not going to leave mm -hmm. the organization? So I always have to know who I'm going to call and to, to replace you because nothing's guaranteed. Mm -hmm. Right. So, it, so anyway, it's a story. Any way you look at it, have options. <laughs>